Hey, I see you, Terrell Lamar. You talking Pistons today? You know what? I'll give it a couple minutes. Go I'll ahead. give it a couple minutes. You know Go what? Ahead. They're 2-2 two two in preseason. We don't take any victory laps on that. But there were some things that you can extrapolate already from these four games. K. Cunningham finally looked like the K. Cunningham people wanted to see in that second game versus the Phoenix Suns. And he went ham in that one, man. Almost put up a triple-double. He was, a, he was a, I believe, what a, a rebound shy of a triple-double. He had Or an assist. He was 25 points, 12 rebounds, 9 assists, 10 to 16 from the floor. Jaden Ivey, 16 points, 5 rebounds. Tobias Harris made his debut in a Detroit Pistons uniform again. 22 points, 5 rebounds, 3 assists, 2 or 4 from behind the arc. And you saw how we can all work. That's my takeaway. I don't – the record, throw it out the window. Does this look like an NBA offense, finally? Do they look like they can stay in front of people on defense? So my takeaway is the biggest one, the biggest one, Kay Cunningham and Jaden and Ivey, they look like they work right now. Jaden and Ivey is, is shooting over 50% from the floor right now, and he's doing it in a plethora of ways. And when, as soon as you saw Tobias Harris come back, did that stop at all what Jaden and Ivey was going to do? No, it did exactly what we thought. It helped them both. That's something I've been saying. I believe this shooting, the floor spacing, and who, Depay, who Tobias Harris is, that's going to help out both Kay Cunningham and Jade Nivey. That is my biggest takeaway right now. I think my biggest takeaway is similar to yours. Cade Cunningham and Jaden Ivey know what space looks like. Mm. Wow. <laughs> this, uh, this, uh, what novel, a concept. This uh, novel concept. But no, that, that's why you bring in a Tobias Harris. And man, I know that it's preseason. We all know that things could unravel, although I don't think they will. Things could unravel because preseason ultimately doesn't mean anything. But Tobias Harris looks like he is going to help Cade and Jaden Ivey immensely. And he's going to knock down a lot of those open shots. He is going to actually make the shots and actually get Cade Cunningham some assists on where last year, oftentimes, uh, Cade Cunningham made assist-worthy plays, but the shots weren't going in. Tobias Harris, man, he's a guy that... If I, I believe in Cade Cunningham a lot as a playmaker. Yes, sir. Tobias Harris could be a guy that averages between like 18 and 21. He's done I, it multiple times. That's why, remember, one of our Swisher breaks. Swi Golly. Swisher, Swisher breaks. breaks. Swiss or breaks. Swisher Shout breaks. out Swisher Sweet. This is tomorrow. Uh, one of those was who Tobias Harris can be. And I, I you know what? The more and more I'm thinking about it, just as he's going to help this backcourt, they're going to help him as well. Oh, yeah. So I, I can see him being one of those guys that's averaging over 20 points per game. And ultimately, it's because guys like Kay Cunningham and Jade and Ivy, they're unselfish ball players who just want to win in Detroit Pistons uniforms. That is not cap. I get it. These guys get paid millions to play the game. And if you get paid millions to play the game, these guys are choosing to be right here. Think about all the stuff Jade and Ivy dealt with last year. Oh, yeah. And he's still like, this year it looks like, oh, what? Last year? Never happened. <laughs> so, you know what? And, and I think this, one more thing on the Pistons. I see some people talking about it in the in the chat. We still got to wait to see how their defense looks during the NBA regular season. They look more connected. But I do believe one kumbaya that we can all, I don't care if you're a detractor, if you're a hater, if you're a slappy, if you're a critic, if you're just kind of waiting, their energy looks improved, remarkably improved over last year. The hustle, the energy, the getting after it, the rookies coming in, you know, Ron Holland entering the game and wanting to get after everybody. That's something that I hope translates to day one of the regular well, season. And to me, that's coaching. That's 100% on, 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 on coaching. I mean, Monty Williams, I get it. We've said a lot about Monty Williams, but we all know he didn't want to be here. We all know that he pretty much demoralized Jaden Ivey from day one. And J.B. Bickerstaff, mm -hmm. he's somebody whose hallmark of the Cleveland Cavaliers teams that he coached was defense and effort. And then Fred, Fred Vinson can come in and uh, help, help some others out with the shooting. Looks to have worked wonders with uh, Jaden Ivey, by the way. But these guys just look mm -hmm. excited to play for a coach who's motivated, who wants to be there, who wants to get the most out of all of the young guys. And, and also to get uh, maybe a renaissance year from guys like Tobias Harris or uh, Malik Beasley. Guys who were good before, but man, I'd love to see... I just, I love to see the difference already. And you're right, you can see it even yeah. through the TV. Yep. Yeah, what about you, KG? Uh, no, I wanted to uh, uh, ask a question. Somebody in the chat, I think it was Cheez It uh, eight fifty one. Shout out to you. Right. They were asking about Ron Holland and how he's looked so far since you brought him up. Yeah, definitely. You want to see him start to knock down those three point shots. And uh, you know what? His trainer and his camp—they're relaying to me that he understands that and he's working hard to get there. 
but you like you like a lot of the other things that you see. His mm -hmm. defense, his fearlessness, his courageousness. He he doesn't care if he's on the court or not. Like he wants to play. He wants to be out there. Remember, he told us uh, personally that um, he wants to win Rookie of the Year. He's, he feels disrespected by this class. So everything I'm seeing out there on the court looks like a guy who wants to at least make sure defense, hustling, rebounding, that that can have him on the court day one. And then one of the more underrated um, kind of aspects of Ron Holland's game that I'm actually really, really liking is this. He swings the ball really well. Yeah. Whether that's pump faking the three and swinging it, whether it's It'll pump faking it. Yama, that doesn't no. have to be said. Yeah. I don't think this class even has a Brandon Miller. Mm. I'm just saying, there's a golden opportunity for somebody to put up like a uh, Malcolm Brogdon type rookie of the year yeah. season. Hmm. Look I'm at, just saying. Look at Sam coming around, man. We all know how he was on draft night. <laughs> I was here from like eight in the morning to yeah. like ten. I, 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 no, no excuses. No excuses. Play like a champion. I got. I got to own. Repent things. for your sins. I got to own things when I am wrong, and uh, hopefully I am wrong on Ron Holland. And I said yeah. the next day that I hope Ron Holland makes me look like the biggest idiot in all of Detroit sports media and. So far, so so far, so good in that. But uh, do you know where anybody should go if they want to uh, up their fitness a and little where bit? where is that? That's Planet Fitness. It's oh. fitness that fits your budget. That's also the Pistons official gym. <laughs>